Hello, Film Reverie listeners. This is Michael Beckemeyer, and I'm popping in just before the episode starts today to let you know that our guest for this week is named Stephen Stull. He's the festival director for the Sick and Wrong Film Festival in Orlando, Florida. And after we recorded, well, after we um, were done with the episode, he sent us a discount code for anybody who might listen to Film Reverie, who is also in Orlando or coming to Orlando, who might want to visit the festival. So he gave us a discount code. All you have to do is go to filmfreeway.com slash sickandwrongfilmfestival slash tickets and enter in the discount code SNW Film Rev. And you'll get 25% off any of your tickets. The tickets are already, like, they're pretty inexpensive anyway. So 25% off is, like, hard to say no to. Filmfreeway.com slash sick in wrong, as in S-I-C-K-N, wrong, film festival slash tickets. And you enter in the discount code SNW film rev. You'll get 25% off of the tickets that you purchase. So... Use that if you can. Uh, he was a great guest. Uh, we talked about festivals, uh, finding your voice, uh, filmmaking. Uh, he's a prolific filmmaker himself. We will also post this discount code and link in our show notes for this episode. So if you'd rather just go to the website, go to filmreverie.com and look for this episode. And there you go. That's it for now. Thank you for listening. We will roll the episode and go. Do you, know how, do you know how young you make me feel watching you suffer through life? <laughs> the, you want to talk about last night, my finger and thumb were just like doing their own little thing last night. I couldn't go to sleep because for almost two hours, my finger and thumb were just like, beep, 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 beep. Just, they were just dancing around. And it wasn't like a, just a little twitch. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think everybody gets muscle twitches sometimes. This is just like a... Like they're practicing Pilates they, they or Jap- Kung Fu. Are they Japanese? They sound like Japanese samurais. But I'm... I'm sitting up in my bed with my finger twitches thinking, I guarantee you Becca Meyer doesn't experience this. This is just a Brad thing. No, it's Why is, just, what's this? What's this competition you have I'm with not me competing on? Competing with you. What's this competition you have on? Who had no. the worst day? No, I, it's just that because sometimes I want to believe that some of the things I'm experiencing are what every forty-something person experiences. No, you're experiencing something but, that every eighty-something yes, experiences. Yes, that is my yeah. belief. So you're like a preview for coming attractions for me. Uh-huh. And what's with all the tater tots? It's food. What do you mean? It's just... What's... By the way, talking with your mouth full is, is super fun for people listening on the microphone. Well, they shouldn't be listening. I mean, that's, not... That's not what we're... That's not no, the message we're trying to no, convey, meant, is that they shouldn't be listening. I meant, we, aren't we done doing our thing? <laughs> no, we have to do the intro that you love to do so much. Oh. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. I remember the episode. It's it's, it's, it's actually, not episode. It's take. It's not actually fifty six either. It's fifty seven. God, yeah. you always have a little wrench to throw in. How did you manipulate me into fucking up the episode? I was came in so confident, knowing film reverie podcast take fifty seven and action. Hello, Film Reverie listeners. This is Michael Beckemeyer, and with me, as always, is the balding you walk. Yeah, you can't get rid of me. I won't go away. I've actually okay. moved in. The last time, <laughs> the last time you heard from us, uh, I was—I uh, don't know—maybe forty-five minutes away. You could yeah. avoid me pretty well. My life has t- taken a turn for the worse. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you find it funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> Today we are joined with uh, our uh, a filmmaker friend, recent filmmaker friend, who also has a film festival he's planning in the area in Orlando. His name is Stephen Stahl. He's a filmmaker and a film festival. What do you call yourself? Film festival. Well, coordinator. I, I, always sign, I sign my emails uh, super important guy. Super. But I guess. I guess the. 
I guess I usually just call myself a festival director. Um, festival director. Because yeah. that's just a, a good word to say out of my mouth. That director. Sounds, it sounds so legitimate. When you called yourself what? the festival director for the first time, did you like get the creeps I almost? Like, I, I sound like yeah. one of those guys now. <laughs> so I, I, um, I, I, first of all, we I only... I don't know. Facebook works, I guess, because yeah, I, yeah. I came across you must have been Facebook. Someone I that we both know, like reposted something you did about your sick and wrong film festival. And yeah, I, I jumped I've right on pretty, that. Uh, I've been pretty desperately trying to get anybody's attention on it on Facebook. They uh, I used to I don't know. I don't want to start whining, I guess. But uh, <laughs> Facebook, you, you probably know this. Facebook really nerfed the uh, advertising uh, or the reach for Facebook pages now. Yeah, yeah. So like anytime you post something, they want you to spend a bunch of money to actually let your own followers see it, which is, yeah. anyway, that's, that's, that's a, that's yeah. a, that's a sore spot. But so, yeah, I've been trying to get people I know to actually, uh, hook me up with other people so yeah. that I don't have to pay Facebook a bunch of money. One of the most interesting quotes I saw somebody say in the last few months about Facebook is, uh, it's not necessarily about Facebook, but it was in the context of the Facebook thing that's been going on. Was yeah. uh, anytime you're getting something for free, you're the product. Yeah, that's absolutely it. You're 100% right. And I think that's one of the things. Like, I actually, believe it or not, I left social media completely for about five years. And it was only when I started the festival back up and I started looking for outlets to advertise that I yeah. decided to get back on. And at the time, it was it was pretty easy. Like I would post something, and if I had a hundred followers, a hundred followers would see it. Right now, I post something, and I have eleven hundred followers, and I'll be lucky if two hundred see it. Yeah, and it's just so frustrating because they've already taken the initiative. They clicked like, yeah. right? Like it's like I, I'm not spamming them. It's like they already chose that to want to see this stuff. Yes, and um, Facebook just won't show it to them unless I fork over the edge. It's uh... It's it's the same. We have the same problem. I'll say predicament. I'm not problem. Yeah, yeah. There's a predicament yeah. when trying to promote our, our show, or even when we were doing yeah. a, a crowdfund a, a couple years ago for our feature film that we uh, finished anyway. But we were trying to raise funds to help mm -hmm. us through post production. It just right, was right. like you kind of feel like, you know, the 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 Twitter the Twitter statistic is like maybe one percent of the people that follow you will see it and maybe even yeah. interact with it. it's like one percent bonkers to me like the whole conceit of social media is that there are people whose lives you want to make yourself a part of right right They're, and and yet ever since its inception facebook has been giving you more and more ways to filter out the people you call your friends you know yeah 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 i mean i, I <laughs> Facebook not... actually brought friends, fought, brought people back into my life who I didn't think I ever wanted to talk to again anyway. <laughs> right, like, right. <laughs> the, you know, Twitter used to be people you wanted to know, and Facebook was people that you used to know. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, so a lot of them are people I'm glad to, you know, re get back in contact with. But uh, some of them are just people like, oh, Oops. like this guy. <laughs> Let me, oops, sorry. Exactly. Bump the microphone. What, what's ridiculous, though, is that you i mean you they force you you have to you're trying to raise money and mm -hmm. so but you have to have money in order to raise money in order to crowdfund in order to advertise for your sick and wrong film festival whatever it is yeah. you got to have a big chunk of money so that you can advertise so that you can raise the money that you needed to begin with so it's like very <laughs> yeah frustrating and, and the worst it's it's like yeah you got to like raise money for the campaign to raise money but yeah. one of the things that i've been running into with sick and wrong is that uh in the past i have bitten the bullet and decided all right you know what i'm going to put some money down i'm going to pay for this ad i'm going to promote this post yeah. and then as soon as i do that 4 seconds later i get an automated notice from facebook saying your ad has been flagged it's been for as inappropriate you know <laughs> and i trying to find out why they flagged it is just a nightmare. Flush your money down the toilet. Hold on a second. Hold on yeah. a second. Your film festival, which is called the Sick and Wrong <laughs> Film Festival, got flagged for inappropriate content. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hell shocking. Yeah, I can't why? Why are you surprised? <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. You're you're exactly right. I don't know. <laughs> like I I ran a Kickstarter recently. Or uh, yeah, it was a Kickstarter trying to shoot the short film, and uh, um, I don't know what the I I make things difficult on myself. Because I titled the movie using a profanity, yeah. and just that, just this, the title of this movie, I was trying to raise money for. Every time I tried to add, uh, run an ad, no flag, 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 <laughs> you know. And I actually had friends of mine 
And at first I was furious, but I guess I can I can understand their position. But I had friends of mine who told me flat out, listen, I was I would support you, I would give you the money, but I couldn't back you on Kickstarter because I didn't want that showing up in my Kickstarter profile. And I'm like, oh come on. <laughs> but the real lesson, I can't blame them. The real lesson is that I'm not making it easy easy for people to support me on this. Yeah. You know, I should have. Pick hey, some uh, team. Yeah. Well, here's Becca the, Meyer is here's, familiar with that. Here's the good news. Yeah. Here's All the right. good news. It has nothing to do with your film. People just aren't going to support you anyway. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not trying to be cynical is that here. The lesson? <laughs> I'm not trying to be I cynical. So much no, what now. it is, it's hard to get people's attention without money. No matter what. Yeah. No yeah, matter what. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've had I've had people. Um, we ran our our. Kicks, we, no, it wasn't a Kickstarter. We ran a Seed and Spark mm-hmm. campaign for our okay. film, Really Pathetic and Totally Awkward, which we were trying to work through post. Um, it's, a, it's about Brad. Um, <laughs> I think they knew that It's actually not about, it's not about Brad. I just, it's an easy joke. Um, and we, and we, nice to meet you, Brad. And we, <laughs> you say, yeah, nice to meet you. And uh, actually, it wasn't even that. We were trying to – we were selling tickets to our premiere, which we – like for three oh, okay. months, just, just – we rented out a space – and, you know, yeah. it's like hundreds of dollars to rent the theater. And we just needed to sell a certain amount of tickets for $10 a piece, by the way, um, yeah. to cover the cost of the theater. After that, it was just extra money, right? So, right. Um, but we had, we had friends of ours who were in the movie. Their friends were telling them things like, well, it doesn't sound like a movie I'd be interested in. So I'm like, and, and, <laughs> and, and my friend who's in the movie is like, it, it doesn't, you're supporting your, you're supporting me. You're supporting yeah, your friend. It's me. It's not it does, me. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. whether you would be interested or not, this isn't, you know, a star is born. It's a local independent yeah. movie that got made for like zero dollars. Like, I'm sorry, we couldn't appeal to your <laughs> higher sensibilities. Come see the fucking movie. You know, but they, they just, uh, they just were like, yeah, I don't know. And I really think that it, the hardest part is to get people to care. You know, yeah, so it's not know, I, it's not that guy who didn't want to come see it because it didn't seem interested. It's like our job to find a way to make people care about it. And that's the hard part. I tell my students all the it. time. I'm like, when you're making something, it's your job is to manipulate their emotions in such a way that you get them to actually put their phone down for two minutes and pay attention to right. your thing. Whatever it is, it's hard. What do they call it? Like a mind share, right? Like you only have so much attention in any given day. Like I have. <laughs> Like very little I, for me. <laughs> very little, yeah. And, and it's it's tough deciding where to put it. But yeah. I think one of the one of the problems I run into is that like uh, I have um um I don't have I think enough people in my social circle who are uh, movie people and weird people because yeah. um I think most of my friends who have normal jobs and retirement plans and children and mortgages and stuff like that, right? They, productive they, productive yeah, members of society. Yeah. Yeah. Which you're supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Those <laughs> fucking weirdos. But anyway, um, they all seem to kind of believe that filmmaking is like a hobby to me. Yeah. You know? And they're like, this is, or, or movies in general are a hobby to me. Like this festival is, is a just a party I'm throwing. Like they expect it, you know, when you describe it, they expect it, oh, is it going to be like, in your living room or something like that. And then it's no, this is, this is a real, this is an endeavor for me. You know, like if somebody, if somebody offered to pay me a salary of like $20,000 a year just to run sick and wrong, I would quit my job. I absolutely would. Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's how uh, attached I am to this thing. That's how passionate I am. Before we get too far down the road, I yeah. never had you even explain what Sick and Wrong was. So <laughs> exp- explain your festival and what it is and why you started it. And uh, to tell, give us the backstory on that thing. Absolutely. I will. Okay. So what is Sick and Wrong? That is probably the biggest question because it, it's, 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 sick it's and the wrong. thing I, it is Sick and Wrong. It's a perfect um, name for, for what you're doing, by the way. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I think so too. I think the problem is that a lot of people who don't I don't know. I guess I should get to the point. Anyway, I, I feel like a lot of people walk away thinking it's a horror fest, yeah. and it's not the case. This is not a horror festival. What it is is the way I like to describe it is we're going to play movies that are aggressively bizarre. That's that's the that's, that's the cute little buzz phrase that I like to use. Sick and Wrong is a film festival for movies of pretty much any genre that you walk away thinking, "What the hell did I just watch?" You know. I want the kind of movies that leave you sort of gobsmacked and, and maybe a little nauseated 
uh, just wondering what it was that you watched. And I guess for people in the know, people who have been to festivals and things like that, it's more like a midnight movie festival. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, kind yeah. of thing we're looking for. Yeah. And it's for, so the, the people that maybe there are people that don't know what midnight film festival is. Sure. They explain <laughs> what you'll see. And I'll give you the story. I'll give you the story. Uh, I went to one of these. Yeah. Do you, you know, yeah. Right, sure. Yeah. Shrug. I do, um, but it's been a while, so it'd be good to be reminded. They're just, it's exactly his festival. It's exactly what his festival, so let him, yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've seen documentaries. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened to me is I went to one of these, like, prestige festivals, and, of course, they had all these great movies, these big, um, like, uh, independent touchstone movies, and, and they were all fantastic. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing that, but they also had what they called a midnight program. I'm not, and I was like, all right, well, what's in the midnight program? Is it a bunch of horror or something like that? And so I went to the midnight shorts program at this festival. And the first movie I'm going to show it to you, I'm going to find the link to it. Cause it's out on Vimeo now. Uh, I'll sh- it's this two and a half movie. And it's about a guy as white dude with cornrows rapping. And then he cuts his own head off and then he fucks his own head hole. And like <laughs> <laughs> in two and a half minutes, not, not and his, I, not his mouth. His stump. No, no, no. He fucks his stump. And 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 while he oh. tells himself to stop. Anyway, I'll show you this movie. It's amazing. It's called Wild Up. So he's saying on... stop it, don't do it, and then he's doing it anyway? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's and probably my favorite is... part. He's raping himself. <laughs> and then yeah, saying yeah. no. Yeah. And saying <laughs> no. No means no. Did he stop? He did not. He did not. Absolutely he did not. And then And then... The cum runs down the toilet, and you end up in this like uh, it just dot 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 experimental and then the cum animation runs going down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> dot dot dot. I'm then sorry. the cum runs down the toilet. <laughs> so two things happen. First of all, I learned what midnight movies were, and they were the <laughs> movies that defied classification. They were yeah. the movies that yeah. like the festival wanted to play because they were good and they were weird, but there was no way they could play them in the daytime to the regular audiences who were showing up in their nice suits or their khaki pants or whatever. Right. So the midnight program is where they dumped – dump. that's not the right term. These, the, the festival, I'm sure, was happy to play these <laughs> movies. Yeah. But, but it's where you put the stuff that, 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 you, that you can't wrap your head around, you know, the yeah. stuff that, that normal people who don't – you know, somebody who's never done acid before or who's, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it helps, I'm sure. But the midnight movies are the weirdest stuff, the stuff that would make people yeah. not just like – it's not like offensive. It's not gory. It's not like that. It's just it's just bizarre. I'm it's pretty just... sure there's a lot of offense <laughs> in a lot of it. Maybe. Because um, yeah. screwing your own head is – uh, offensive to a lot of people. There's a real mind fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I get it. <laughs> the other thing that happened was that, like, I my life completely changed. I don't want to. I don't want to sound. Oh my god! Here. He saw someone screw his own head, and his life changed. <laughs> it, changed <from> life. <laughs> it, it absolutely did. Because after that point, I just started. I said, okay, this is what I want to make. These are the movies I want to yeah. make. Because I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker before that point. But I didn't. I never really pinned down what my voice was going to be, you know. And I saw this movie, and I thought, "Holy crap! This is this is insane! I want to make this. I want to be one of these people playing these midnight or making these midnight movies." And then I decided, or I thought to myself, "Okay, here's this festival. They have these great big prestige movies that everybody loves and everybody wants to see, and that's great. But then they also have this mind-blowing midnight program." And it just didn't seem like they were promoting that at all. Yeah. It seemed like when you looked at all their festival materials and their promotional stuff and their ads and things like that, it was all trying to get you to, you know, the big premieres and the 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 so and so's big indie project or whatever the new and and they weren't playing up this midnight stuff. And so I said, why isn't there a festival that's just for this stuff? Yeah. And so I started. I started one. <laughs> so how long did it take you from when you realized that to when you started the festival? Was it like a right away thing, or is it something you had to work towards? Well, it was. It, I, I guess it took about two years um, from when I saw that, because I guess I saw that in. Okay, so I saw that in 2013, and then in 2015 I started uh, uh, working on the festival. Uh, the first festival was in 2016. Um, this first second round. It was 2016, so we're in our third year right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I was so, like, I honestly, the first year when I opened up, I created my Film Freeway account and started opening up for submissions, I was afraid we wouldn't get anything. 
yeah. I was afraid that the filmmakers out there would be like, who is this? Never heard of this before. No idea what they're talking about. And uh, I would get nothing. Instead, I was deluged with with weird, beautiful stuff. And by the time the festival came around, I only had the venue for one night. And I, I was just so overwhelmed with great material that I wound up programming like five hours of movies in, in two blocks over one night. It was this huge marathon session. I don't know how anybody sat through the whole thing. Um, so I've, I've, I've learned some from, uh, learned from that a little bit. We spaced things out a little bit. This year we're out to three days, like nice. on Friday, Saturday. And, Sunday. and uh, I got the festival. Like every program is about an hour and a half roughly. And then there's some gaps where people can go get a taco or whatever across the street and then come back because – Making somebody sit for five hours watching these bonkers mind melters is yeah. maybe a little much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is uh, – so you found that – have you found that these filmmakers who are making these hard-to-categorize movies are looking mm-hmm. for places to play their things? Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, is, that is the most uh, reassuring thing that I noticed because there were filmmakers who were saying – even after the first festival, there were filmmakers saying – uh, God, I sound douchey, like I'm blowing myself up here. But there, there were filmmakers saying, "Okay, something like this needs to exist. We're glad that you made this because yeah. we need more venues for this." Because, like I said, those big festivals do have midnight programs, but they're not going to program more than an hour and a half of midnight shorts. Right. You know, those yeah, kind of films are least likely to or, get uh, uh, what do you call it? Not uh, accepted yeah. because yeah. Uh, even Mike, Mike has a lot of stuff he likes to make that's not. I mean, it, I think some of the films he wants to make are fit, sick and wrong <laughs> very well. Um, but I'm just saying we have a hard time, even yeah. if we're not all into the sick and wrong, uh, mm-hmm. getting our film into festivals sometimes. I think maybe the first midnight movie type movie I ever saw was The Doom Generation. Okay. The Gregor uh, Aki, right? Gregor Aki, yeah. yeah. Do you even know what I'm talking about, Brad? Yeah, I've seen okay. documentaries. <laughs> so it's not a... <laughs> Documentary. It's a yeah, digital. there's documentaries on midnight movies. I oh, saw well, the one with the with the transgender person that crapped into it ate their own crap. Oh, you're talking about Divine. Divine. Yeah. You're talking is about that, the is that Pink Flamingos? Yeah. Oh wait, no, no, yeah. no, no wait, but Divine didn't. It, I think it was. I think poop. that sounds correct. She no, she didn't eat her own. It was poop. human she ate dog poop. She, she ate dog it's a different poop. I thought thing. it was human. It's different altogether. It, either <laughs> way, it was still poop. <laughs> <laughs> the way it was still, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, like John Waters, I would be delighted to have John Waters on. Yeah. The yeah. So, I don't know if Doom, Doom Generation counts as a midnight movie. It was out there, but it was also it was more like a social satire, something or other, than, yeah. than a midnight movie. Yeah. So, um, I think Greg Rocky, like his stuff, definitely lies on here. I think people come to Sick and Wrong and they're not sure what to expect. Because that's the whole thing is you, you, there's no expectations, right? Right. And so they imagine it's going to be a bunch of like torture porn or something like that. Yeah. And I have to explain to them, no, that's not what this is about. So I'm glad you brought up Gregor Aki because we have the whole like the whole wrong wing of sick and wrong is all about uh, <laughs> movies that, that – with topics that don't make any sense, topics that, that defy traditional movie topics, you know? Like – um, my, uh, I, I have friends who won't believe me when I keep telling them, you know, I have friends who like get queasy if, if somebody gets punched in a movie and they're like, Oh, I'm never coming to your festival. I'm like, okay. No, listen, <laughs> I have yeah. movies that don't have any gore, that don't have any violence and, and, and it exists. It's possible. And you're, and you're probably wondering, oh, how can something without any gore or any violence or anybody puking or dying or whatever be sick and wrong? And I say, Come fucking watch these movies. I yeah. got some stuff. You know, you are you are right because I I I in my mind I probably do go straight to uh, gross or horror or yeah um, something no, just something just you. something just weird and not in a David Lynch weird but like a weird yeah, weird. Yeah. Like David Lynch movies, you can still say, "I see what happened, beginning, middle, and end." <laughs> but <laughs> there's a yeah yeah like weirdness. Did you see... Did you see a movie called um, The Holy Mountain by Alejandro Jodorowsky? No. In the 70s? No, okay. <laughs> what about... Is, is that the guy that almost made Dune, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jodorowsky's yeah. Dune, yeah. He was going to make Duke Atreides uh, 
a, a eunuch who impregnated his wife with a drop of blood, right? Something yeah. like that. So, yeah. I'm glad he didn't because I love Dune. <laughs> well, not everybody loves Dune, though. Everybody, I know, and awesome. I don't know if everybody, was... anybody, I don't know if anybody would have loved Jodorowsky's Dune either. But yeah, but yeah. it would have been completely like different than David it, yeah. Lynch. Yeah. I wish so, we could live in a universe where they both existed. Yeah, yeah. There is an alternate universe out there, like but, yeah. butter, like the butterfly effect. There's like like sliding doors. <laughs> There's an yeah, alternate yeah. universe where he got to make his movie, and everybody was like, "That is the craziest fucking That's thing I've ever seen." In my life. As long as there's no alternate universe where Gwyneth Paltrow was involved with the two, <laughs> yeah, sliding doors <laughs> version of. Yeah. By the way, speaking of movies that aren't gory or whatever, uh, we saw a trailer. For, I think it was called Detective Jangles. <laughs> Lieutenant Jangles. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Jangles. Jangles. Oh my god, that you looked are gonna love this movie. awesome. I saw that trailer. I said, I have to see. This movie. I'm so psyched for these guys. Uh, it's just a couple of uh, Australian dudes who spent a couple years putting this movie together. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm glad you watched the trailer. Um, but like the thing is, they most of that movie they created like on their laptops uh, over just a course of, of years, rendering and, and and whatever. I'm giving the wrong impression of it. It is a fantastic yeah. movie. It is. <laughs> it is, it, is it feature it, film or is it short film? It is. It is. It's a feature. It's yeah. uh, an hour and a half and change or something like that. But yeah, um, and it is it is a perfect pick for Second Rung. I'm so honored that these guys submitted because it is amazing and it is perfect right in our aesthetic. Yeah. And are it you, is it's gross and weird and hilarious. Are and... you the are there are you the premiere? No, sadly okay. they have played. Um, we're the Southeast premiere, I think. Either that or the Florida premiere. One of the two. Yeah, um, I think it might be Southeast. I, I don't remember. Um, I have it somewhere. I, I... <laughs> uh, but yeah, they did play. They played up at a, a genre festival in um, outside of DC, up in Virginia, and that's where I saw it. And so I was really psyched when they decided to submit. Um, it's what, it's. So Brad and I, time. Brad and I, have a long running uh, argument uh, about. Lover's yeah. <laughs> he won't I will admit end that he this conversation <laughs> if you call it that again. <laughs> he won't admit it, but he loves me. So, so we have this long-running argument about the value of bad movies for entertainment, like The Room. Yeah, The um, Room. So I find it very hard to be entertained by movies because they're bad. You know right. what I mean? Even if it's I, on purpose. No, no. Yeah. See, I think that makes it worse. I think that makes it worse. I'm in your camp. I'm in your camp because, like, when I watch – okay, so I watched um, – let's see. I watched The, the Room, and I was uh, hysterical. I yeah. thought it was hilarious. Um, there, But I think The Room has two things. It's not just bad. Uh, I think there are two things about it that really elevate it. One is that it's sincere, and I think that has to be there. I think it's got to be there for for so bad it's good. It has to be sincere. The other yeah. thing is that it has to be like, it has to be, it has to defy rationale, right? Because honestly, I I don't know. I watched some people, some movies that people consider so bad they're good, and like I watched Plan Nine from Outer Space, yeah, um, which I've never well, seen. Yeah, I watched it well into adulthood after having heard about it for decades. Yeah, and when I watched it. Like, I knew it was going to be bad, but nobody told me just how boring it was. Oh, yeah. It is so dull. It is. So much time passes in that movie with just nothing happening, and, and, and or just people sitting around having conversations in offices or yeah. offices it's with really rates. It's really just off. bad. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just flat bad, but, but all these people I talked to before had said that it was so bad it was good, and I didn't feel that at all. Yeah, I don't – I'm not amused by it. I don't – I don't like – it's. I have the same problem with putting stupid people on television and making them famous. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why do we keep celebrating people's stupidity? And it's like we reward them for it, so they think I'm doing yeah. something right. And I'm like, you should stop being stupid. But they're like, no. Me. Look where it's gotten me to this point. You know, like the. Uh, how about that girl? She's like got a. Oh, she's yeah. a millionaire catch now, and she's yeah, yeah. catch me outside. <laughs> I think I think it's not. How about that? That's a quote from our movie. Not how about that? It's catch me outside. How about that? Catch me outside. Yeah, she's got a reality show. I think she's like. It's like why do we? Her rap name is Bahad Bahabi. Why do you know that? Why do you know that? 
Listen. He's in charge of sick and wrong, okay? That's probably both, but I, at least one. I want to point out, I guess I, I want to jump in real fast um, because I feel like the conversation, we started talking about these uh, bad movies and right on the heels of talking about Lieutenant Jangles. And, <laughs> yeah. right, 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 right. Lieutenant Jangles is goddamn amazing. It is right. beautiful. It is well, a so so we could you know I, I we could still talk I, about yeah that. I did not mean to make it sound like sure. that. However, um, the Sick and Wrong Festival and some of the trailers that I saw for your for your not trailers but I saw I think a, uh, a previous I mean, a, a previous year teaser from yeah from, yeah, from yeah, yeah. Other yeah. Movies. I try that's what I was trying to find to show Brad but oh. I think I I wonder if what like I want to know what you consider the line is on what was bad and what was sick and wrong yeah well, did you see his award his award is a tentacle, tentacle with, with panties on it panties which is a it, reference right? to yeah. tentacle porn in anime yeah which is definitely <laughs> sick disgusting and wrong yeah <laughs> um well that's the thing about sick and wrong is that there's no judgments this is a judgment you can bring your movie fly. about your fantasy of fucking yeah. your own head in the stump hole you right know. yeah to, yeah. You know, as people do. As people to, do. Yeah, yeah. It's not much worse than that. You're right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so because like The Room mm-hmm. almost could be a perfect midnight movie. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, no, it, is. It, is. It, it is its own midnight thing. They plays all the time in midnight in midnight screenings all the time like that. But Just like this... Sharknado is something that oh, I am, no. have never, ever been amused by. It's really no. bad. I've never wanted to watch it. I've never seen a second of any of the things except for like Before... what's been like trailers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Before, before um, that, before Sharknado ever came out, I remember some friends, uh, like grabbing me frantically by the arm and saying, "Dude, dude, I just watched Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. You're gonna love it." And I said, "Okay, fine." So I found it for like a two dollar Blu-ray and I put it in, and it's the same thing as Plan Nine. Is like, okay, sure, it's bad. It's plain old bad, but it's also mind-numbingly boring. Like nothing yeah. happens in that movie, and I'm wondering. Yeah. What it says about my friends, A, that they loved it, and B, that they think I would love it. Because I found it terrible. That's, I, that's, I, what we, that's how we felt about Mega Shark, isn't, isn't that? Yeah. Or the Meg? No, the Meg. The yeah. Meg. Yeah. The Meg. That's, that's nuts. We thought it was going to be that, funny or you something. You thought that. I thought it was going to be yeah. bad. It, yeah, it was just bad. It was mind numbingly boring. Yeah. And it so wasn't boring. anything like you. it was supposed to be. So, what have you, <laughs> yeah. what have you learned so what, about. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, yeah. So, so what's the difference with the room? I think that the the difference, like, there's this weird, inarticulable thing about the room that makes it different from other movies like this, because because it's not a big spectacle. There aren't, you know, giant fake sharks flopping through the room or anything. I don't even know what the room is in the room. Like, nobody knows what the title means. What room? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the fucking room? Like, what is this? Um, but it's just so like. I think the thing I think it comes when you're watching the movie and you're trying to trying to you're you're using your human brain to try to make sense of what's happening and that's just not possible because it's not the product of a human brain, you know. Whereas Sharknado is the prog is absolutely the product of human brains. It's just people sitting around saying, How goofy can we be? Yeah. You know? And sick and wrong isn't like that. Sick and wrong and and I, I'm I'm taking ownership of it because that's what Sick and Wrong looks for. But it's yeah. not like there aren't movies that would have been Sick and Wrong before there ever was a Sick and Wrong. You know, like um like uh, this movie I was uh this movie called The Greasy Strangler. Right? I if you haven't seen this movie, it is absolutely amazing. It's another one of these life changers for me. And it's about a guy. <laughs> Who covers himself in grease and strangles people? I, I don't know if, that, if, you know, <laughs> if I needed to clear that up or anything like that. But you watch this movie, and it, how does he hold them? Listen, there are so <laughs> many questions, and they are all answered. I promise. Well, that's not true. They're not all answered. But you should watch it anyway. I got it on Blu-ray. I'll, go. I'll get a limited edition Australian Blu-ray. And you can watch it. He's a collector as well of, 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 fine, <laughs> antiqu- of, of fine antiquities. Absolutely, pinky up. Um, but if you try, if you approach this movie as if it were the things you've seen before, like if you approach this movie like it's a horror movie, or you approach this movie like it's a thriller, or you approach this movie like it's a comedy, you're 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 gonna get take the wrong thing away because you can't process it. You try, you know, it's it's a it's not even a square peg in a round hole. It's like a four dimensional peg you're trying to squeeze 
do I, I, I don't know. You know, I have a fondness for these things, so I'm <laughs> absolutely going to inflate their importance to me. But they're so <laughs> they, they defy scrutiny. Mm-hmm. Like you try to you try to you try to piece apart and look at them and say, okay, why did this happen? What was the director thinking? What was this actor thinking in the scene? What was the meaning of the story? And you can't do it. You can't because they weren't designed for that. You know, they were designed for this otherworldly thing. Whereas, whereas if you go back to Sharknado, and it's really easy to see what they were trying to do. It's yeah. super easy. You have no trouble piecing that out. They were trying to be as goofy as hell, and make you laugh. And uh, they knew that if they threw enough sharks at the screen that they could make their production budget back, right? Whereas a movie like The Greasy Strangler, it doesn't care about that. It's it, it's trying to, you know... <laughs> Clearly. Who names Clearly. their movie The Greasy Strangler and gives a shit what so people good. think? <laughs> exactly. exactly. And there, by the way, by the way, I got to warn you, I love The Greasy Strangler. I think, you need to, I, think every, I think it should be required viewing. But there is so much horrible, ugly dicks in that movie. No. I gotta warn you. Not it's watching amazing. It. It's nope. so good. You ruined it. Just, Not gonna watch awful. it. They're the most disgusting, nope. bulbous red. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even, it's you're amazing. putting images in my head that I don't want. <laughs> oh. It is It is classic. Oh. It is. It deserves to be lifted up like Citizen Kane. No. No. <laughs> lifted I up disagree. like Citizen Kane. I disagree. <laughs> All right, so you're you're a filmmaker, also. You I you start out by being a filmmaker, mm-hmm. and it's interesting to see that. It's interesting to hear that your seeing a midnight movie sort of changed your life and helped you find your voice. Like that, like yeah. it goes to that, like you know, existential concept of the truth can be found anywhere, sort of a thing. Um, so, <laughs> but when you but when you started, when you landed on that, when you sort of hit the sweet spot, I had a profound, I, I don't know if it was a, a singular moment in my life, mm-hmm. but I just had a thing where suddenly one day I just poof, I know what kind of movies I want to make and I'm going to concentrate on that forever. Yeah. Um, it's, it doesn't it's mean you'll, you'll, it doesn't mean you'll veer, you won't veer off of it from time to time and try sure. something new. And because even making something out of your thing helps you become better at the thing you want to do. But did you know did, that, that Bob what? Dylan makes Iron Gates? No, I didn't. I didn't know. He that. makes he makes like these ornate, crafted iron. I'm sorry, you're just talking about doing other things like branching yeah, out. No, Bob no, Dylan no, no, no. Makes these gates, these these iron ironwork gates to put on houses or whatever, and they're the most ornate. Uh, whatever anyway so yeah <laughs> so it's exactly what i'm talking about it's exactly it and jim carrey is a painter jim carrey <laughs> right 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 paints. Stuff, yeah. and uh but the thing is so what did you did your filmmaking help you be a better festival director or did your festival director help you be a better filmmaker like because we talked the other day and i think you said you have at least three films out in festivals right now three different films right yeah, well i got two that are in festival one that's in post so i'm trying okay. to get it up there all so right it so be up a, there soon. a third one soon to come so congratulations on being sort of prolific for having two <laughs> like three films right like we're just trying to finish one fucking movie right now hey they're um, all short so like anybody listening you got to know these are short short movies like so, uh, so and so. and the one i saw the other day worms mm-hmm. i saw right, worms. is that one of the ones that's in festivals now or it's yes okay yeah. so that but, was like that was a real short film it had like a real story and it was gross it was a horror it was a horror movie people were shitting worms and cutting worms out of there <laughs> i don't know if that was shit I don't oh know puking where... puking they were puking worms. They were puking oh, worms. The woman who shit herself. Yeah, she it's might funny have because now worms. twice now I've had to remind him that there's a worm shitting in his own movie. Like there's a shot between someone's legs and bloody whatever it is comes falling out from between someone's legs. You know, people I don't, shitting themselves don't, just it falls out of my memory so fast. Like, it's it's not just even so real. such a mundane part of making my movies. It's like yeah. people are always shitting something in my movies. So wow. So, but it was a fifty. It was like a real story. That it was a real story. It wasn't for the gore or grossness. It, like the grossness was part of like the trauma of the story, which no, I, I thought, appreciate- which I thought was good. No, I, I'm so glad. I feel like um, I feel, and I don't want to. I never want the the shocking thing to be enough, you know. Like yeah, yeah, I could have yeah. made a I could have made a movie where somebody vomited up a big pile of worms, 
and then that would have been the whole punchline of the movie. And then, you know, I could have tried to coast on that, and I probably could have gotten, you know, I don't know, whatever. But it's not enough for me. I don't want the shocking thing to be the reason the movie exists. You know what I also liked about your short film? And this is not really a condemnation of anyone who does these kinds of movies, but I was (laughs) relieved, not relieved, I was happy to see a horror movie that was about horror, and it wasn't some five minute jokey Jumpster. horror oh. ho- jokey movie. It was like like the horror is the joke. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. supposed it's like a like a goofy joke and it's also kind of considered a horror movie because it's got blood or zombies or something <laughs> something in it. But your movie was like a real almost like I could sense like a post apocalypse coming. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, yeah. and, and oh, I if it awful. was a if it was a feature film like it wouldn't ever get funny. It would just get worse and worse and worse. Not worse, but you know, no, no, no. I more, darker, more traumatized. Like a, yeah, a bleaker. Yeah, more and more bleak. Um, which yeah. I liked, and I so because you see so many. Even the ones we saw that day at that festival. Again, nothing against those those movies, but mm-hmm. yours was the. It was a horror movie block, and I think there was only one other short film there that was like a serious horror movie. Everything else was sort yeah. of was sort of a comedy slash horror and i don't know where that started and i don't know why yeah. it's so prevalent but it's everywhere now and yeah. i just want somebody to i don't i don't look at those movies and go eh i look at those movies and think oh that was kind of funny but it didn't scare yeah. me I'm, there's nothing horrible yeah, yeah. about it horror is supposed to be horrible horrible something that i, think... I want something to like crawl inside my brain and make me and die? Wanna, <laughs> want me to turn the lights on you know like yeah I, yeah something to make you think afterward like to to start, you know, maybe peeking at shadows or something like that, or, or at least at the very least wondering what might be behind that wall that you're looking at or something yeah, like that. Yeah, just think twice know? about, yeah, stepping outside your car at night sort of thing. I think, yeah. I, I think, I think um, Wes Craven probably said this, but he and I, um, okay, when they made, what was it? What was that spoof called? Scary Movie? Scream. Scream. Oh, no, no, no. Well, no scary no, Movie is scary a spoof movie. of... Scary, scary, movie. Movie. scary yeah. movie. Right, 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 right. When, okay. scary movie, uh, when Scary Movie came out as a spoof of Scream, Wes Craven said something like that it, 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 it perplexed him because Scream was already a spoof. Spoof, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I was with him, exactly. I'm like, I understand. I'm with you. And other people who watch Scream don't realize what it's doing to the tropes, you know? They they don't think of it as a as a as a uh, as a parody of horror movies. They think of it just as a horror movie because they're just kind of like looking at it on the surface, I guess. Yeah. And that's what allows a you know, pardon me, piece of garbage like scary movie to be made, <laughs> right? Because if you don't understand, I'm sorry, I hated scary movie. I yeah, just I never okay. watched it. I don't think I even. He agrees saw it. with you. I, <laughs> yeah, I can't it, defend it. Yeah. It's not. It's nice scary. to meet another fellow snob. Because <laughs> I get a lot of shit for it. Bear in mind, you're, you're calling me a snob after two minutes ago reminding me that I had a woman shit herself in my movie. So look, you know, look, I'm not. I, there's nothing. Doesn't have to. Doesn't mean highbrow. It just means you like prefer. You like turn your nose up at at, at certain things, like like I do. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like the people who made scary movie didn't get what Scream was. Yeah. You know, because Scream was a parody. Yeah, and it, and it, I, it didn't I make any sense. When I saw that movie, first of all, I think I may have told you the other you day. Mean I, Scream? I've never seen any of the '80s slasher movies. I've never seen a Freddy, right, or right. Jason, any of those things. <laughs> so, but when I saw Scream, I, I I at least got the joke. I knew what it was doing. It was making yeah. fun of. And then they basically yeah. had a guy in the movie saying, "Look, <laughs> the rules. Like the virgin never dies. You, you know." Well, if you've had sex, then you're you're the next to die. That, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll was in be there. right back. You yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you say you'll be right back, you're 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 dead. So, so who looks at that and like who looks at that and thinks, okay, well, this is worthy of spoofing? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you made a spoof of The Shining, I would understand that. If you made a spoof of, uh, you know, uh, Halloween, which I mean, I guess is happening over and over and over. Whatever, but oh yeah. it's, it's, it's already spoofed sequel. itself. It's every... spoofed itself. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> but to thing. pick, to pick Scream to be the one you want to spoof, it to me it projects this complete misunderstanding, this total lack <laughs> of knowledge about what Scream was or what horror movies are. It, it doesn't make it makes no sense to me. So I think after that point, 
I don't know. I don't know. I, it's hard to pin down. But you're right. Like I see so much humor. Uh, I, I see so many. Um, I'm trying not to be derivative. I'm not trying to be a derogatory here. But like so many like like frat comedies masquerading as horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't I don't understand it. You know. Part of, part of my problem with them is That's probably is... Sci-Fi Channel did it. Sci-Fi Channel <laughs> ruined horror movies. It's yeah. part, of my, part of my problem is that they are about the joke. And yes. when, some, when something's about the joke, I get like this, like like start to cringe because that means yeah. that they're so aware of how funny they think they are. And then yeah. it has to be really funny. It has to be like something about Mary funny for that to really work. Otherwise, it's, it's like, you think you're so clever. You're not even that funny. Plus, your thing's like four minutes long. And what did I just <laughs> yeah, waste my time, time on? Yeah. You know, I, I like to think about um, there's a, a movie called Pineapple Express. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, and it was packaged as a stoner comedy, right? All the preview or all the the trailers and the and the promotional materials, like, hey, let's watch, you know, um, Seth Goldberg, right? Jesus, what's Seth name? Rogen, Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen, Rogen. Jesus, his, the another Kevin Jewish Goldberg. name, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, he had a partner <laughs> Anyway, um, so let's watch let's watch Seth Rogen and James Franco get stoned and act goofy together. And yeah. so I, when I finally saw it, that's kind of what I was expecting. But like you said, it wasn't – the joke wasn't what the movie was. It's like it was a really, really solid action movie. Yeah. Like if you were to watch it in another language or something, it would still be a lot of fun to watch because it was a solid up action movie with real um, stakes, you know, and, and characters were in danger and things like that. And also they occasionally got high and goofy, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And, it's and like, I really a fish out of, like a fish out of water action story, yeah. These yeah, exactly. Pieces. And and they still made it. It's the same thing with um like Shaun of the Dead. Like people have made a ton of zombie spoof movies and I think most of them are garbage. The thing about Shaun oh, of the yeah. Dead was it was a fantastic rock solid zombie movie that was also really funny. You know? Yeah. Like that's it, hard it wasn't to do. it wasn't it was funny it because they were enough. trying to they were acting they were trying to act as if they would in real life. Like, if this happened yeah. in real life, this is how I would act. Instead of trying yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? It, it seems think, more like a real life sort of way of reacting uh, in that it's, movie. It's so impossible, I think, to dis, to define horror, uh, not horror, humor. It's so impossible to define humor because it's so subjective. And some people like what they like. But I find that personally, the humor that I love the most, the funniest stuff to me, is the stuff that's done straight-faced. You know, yeah. when everybody involved in the, the joke or the scene or whatever is treating it like human beings. Like uh, like if you have a movie, you know, um, oh, I can't I can't think of a good example at the moment. But we're like everybody is behaving like anyone would behave, except there also happens to be a pink elephant in the room or something like that. Right. You know, where, there, where everybody nobody's looking at the camera and winking at you saying, hey, yeah. isn't this hilarious what we're doing yeah. right now? That's oh, my oh, problem. Oh, the lobster. The, the did lobster. You, did this, did <laughs> yeah. you see the lobster? He loves yeah. the lobster. The lobster is great. It's the the, lobster, that's yeah. definitely would go fit in the sick and wrong because <laughs> it, it gets really disturbing to where yeah. you're thinking, yeah. why am I still watching this? <laughs> this is this is one of those movies that, that is like my plague in life because I try to explain the movie. Like if you try to explain the lobster to somebody who hadn't watched it, you no matter what you said, they would go – what? That's silly. Why would I watch yeah. that? Like people turn into animals if they don't get married. That's dumb. I'm not going to watch that. But then if you actually make them watch it, they go, Oh, that's bigger than this. This is yeah. something yeah. more profound than that, you know? And, and I feel like I <laughs> not trying to put myself up there with Yorgos Lanthimos or whatever, but I have that problem myself. It's like, I have this idea for a movie, but if I describe it to you, it's just going to sound so trite or not trite but trivial it's going to sound yeah. so pointless it's going to sound like something that some people should shoot in their apartment over a weekend or something like that and then I'm, yeah. i want you to give me thousands of dollars to make it you know right. but if you just see it if you just trust me if you just watch it when i make it then it's going to be great so what are some of the things that you could tell not even just filmmakers trying to get into your mm -hmm. festival but filmmakers who are at that point where they're ready to start submitting their film like what are like rules of thumb what are what are, what are okay. like I don't know three mistakes you keep catching 
people who submit to your festival co- committing and it's just from na- um, not naivete not not naive ignorance? but like ignorance or like experience. lack of experience or something yeah. yeah first of all they've probably been told to keep their movie short right yeah that, that, they've already been told that so when i tell them that i need to make them understand that 12 minutes is not short <laughs> they think it is Mm-hmm. Uh, because you know what do you, what's your, before you start making movies you, most people don't watch a lot of short films so when you think of a short movie you think okay anything less than an hour and a half must be a short movie right yeah right so some no. will shoot it yes <laughs> but people will shoot these 20 minute movies and as a festival programmer i can tell you that if your movie is 20 minutes it had better be goddamn amazing from the first frame to the last frame because in a 20 minute movie i could program one of one like I would rather program four amazing five minute movies than one pretty good twenty minute movie. Yeah. So yeah. most twenty minute short films I've seen in my life are, too are maybe five to ten minutes too long yeah. at least. I think I think you need to be brutal. I think yeah. young filmmakers or not young, that's um, um, uh, new filmmakers. Yeah, old man. going out beginning <laughs> yeah i'm an old man when, <laughs> when you start your festival journey you need to be just brutal with your edits like chop it down to where you think you have it as small as it can be and then chop another two minutes out of it you know yeah because you you will be a festival programmer's favorite filmmaker if you make a three and a half minute movie that's really good you know yeah. they can throw that anywhere they can program i want to i want to show my audience's just as much as they can possibly see. And if I can fit 10 movies in a block versus five movies in a block, I'm going to go for the 10, you know? Okay. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one thing. The other thing is I understand, and really I don't want to sound like a, like a pompous ass. Or I understand your movie took a lot of effort on the part of a lot of people, but cut your damn credits. Your credits <laughs> oh, are not yeah. important. <laughs> right. You mean like cut them all together or just make them go by I, quicker? Make them go faster. God, make them, I've watched movies where I notice, okay, <laughs> uh, seven minute submission and like two minutes in, I'm still watching opening credits. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what, what, where's your movie? If, yeah. you, if you can spare two minutes for opening credits, cut it. <laughs> you don't need it. Nobody. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, I will go on record as saying that in the vast majority of cases, you do not need an opening credit at all. Yeah. At all. You don't even need a title card. Right? Nobody cares. Just start the movie. If it's a short film, start <laughs> it. Start it right now. You can throw a title up at the end if you want, um, but anybody watching your short film is going to have the schedule, right? They're going to know what it looks like. So right. forget the title card. Nobody needs to see that. So just fade Get, in. Or cut. Just jump start, in. Jump cut, in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Immediate res, right? Like, just jump straight in. Get into the plot. And then when you're over, the credits should be like 10 seconds. And that's it. No, who's, who's just watch? me, everything. Go yeah. up. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it's probably just me anyway. <laughs> um, uh, sound. God, sound is so important. Oh, yeah, yes. Sound, it's so important. And people, oh, you guys are, are podcasters, so you know how important sound can be. But like yeah. a lot of filmmakers think that, you know, once they get the picture done, that that's pretty much like sound is an afterthought. And it's yeah. tough. It's tough to keep an eye on sound during your production, which I'm yeah. sure you guys know. Like, yeah. um, I, I've been doing put... sound for our entire feature film, yeah. and I'm yeah. still uh, going back and making tweaks to the yeah. sound because yeah. I'm we, going yeah. through fixing the, uh, vid- what do you call it, the film look and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I keep hearing like a clap. doesn't sound like the clap should in that room, so I'm like having to go yeah. back and yeah. fix it. And we were in good shape. We we, we yeah. had good production sound when we came out of it. Yeah. Like, I've seen things that are just like, like the yeah, onboard but... camera microphone, oh, and yeah. that's what oh, people God. thought was oh, recording sound. Yeah. yeah. My students. I... Oh, boy. <laughs> I The first movie I shot out of, uh, after I finished school, um, I dress one of the actors in this windbreaker without thinking about it and he comes rolling up on oh. sp- like these two dudes are talking they're like oh, no. and then the third guy comes up in the windbreaker and he's like <laughs> and oh i thought you were gonna have the, the like the 
Oh, the, the sound of the sleeves. Yeah, yeah, the uh, sleeves. Oh. Like on the microphone, on the boom mic, it sounded like the thing was like made of cardboard or something. It was awful. It was so hmm. like the pra- movie was practically unusable just because of this one stupid jacket, you know. And that was all on me, like I, because I didn't. It never occurred to me. Oh, this jacket could be loud, so I pay a, as much attention to that stuff as I can these days. Because uh, sound will kill your movie if you, if, if it hurts, if the it people, mixes bad. People will watch a movie that looks like shit. But a movie that sounds like shit is impossible to watch. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And and from a it's frustrating like as a filmmaker, like as a film festival as a festival runner, I'm sitting here saying you need to have good sound, right? But as a filmmaker, I know that how that's so incredibly hard. Especially like if it's a if you're making a movie that's a weird movie and it's got this great effects scene in it. Right, and you can find an effects person who wants to do it because they can put it in their reel, and yeah. you can find actors who want to work on it because it's an interesting story or whatever, and they can put it in their reel, and you can find, you know, a cinematographer who wants to shoot it because he can go in his reel. Right, the thing about sound is that nobody you really can't... listens to a, yeah, a production you... sound mixer's reel. It yeah, doesn't exist. I've anymore. never, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of one. Yeah, uh, it doesn't. I don't, so I'm not sure it exists. <laughs> I, I I I feel bad about not paying anybody what they're worth, but I mean it's a fact of my life is that I just don't have the money to pay people's rates, you know. Yeah. But I can usually find actors and uh, uh, effects people who and and even like costumers who are willing to work for less than they're worth because they can get interested in the project and they can show people and say, hey, I was part of this. Yeah. But sound guys are my hobgoblin because it's hard to convince yeah. them because to them. It's just a paid gig. Like they can't put a reel out with, "Hey, listen to how great the the, yeah, the yeah. dialogue is in this one and scene." And honestly, you know? dude, they they own all their equipment a lot of the time. They do. And that they shit's do. Expensive. I, I, I totally, it's I totally so get it. Yeah, yeah. We but got, I, we got I own, lucky. I own all my equipment too, and I understand. <laughs> but come yeah, on, yeah. Man, come along for the rights. You know, it's gonna be yeah. fun. We we did get lucky with our sound guy for for our film. Yeah. Like we just. Yeah. And it was one of those weird internet things. He somehow thought he knew Brad. I mean, honestly, how do you forget? Like, he looked at Brad and said, I think I know that guy. He didn't. He, he didn't know I, I him. Don't know. He thought he was somebody else. He thought he looked like somebody else who apparently was much taller than you in real life. Yeah. But, uh, everybody, everybody's but, like height on the internet. But since he thought he knew Brad, he offered to work on our movie. And we didn't realize until we actually talk to him a little bit that he's like oh yeah i don't know brad like i thought i did but yeah. by then we had already hey, talked already, about yeah, the movie yeah. and he was like our unsung hero the whole time he showed up yeah. early every day and <laughs> and got like i'm gonna say like 90 95 of our production sound was totally is usable nice yeah. yeah and is in the nice. movie because we didn't do any adr we were, we're not we were no not adr yeah two of our two of our actors moved to la right after the <laughs> production so there was no doing it adr there's no, no reshoots yeah, yeah. by no the way that's another part to the audio that we're talking about here is uh especially if you're new to filmmaking you gotta you know youtube and google you gotta figure out how to fi- fix your audio and post-production as well yeah because i had a mm-hmm. lot of that i had to watch there's a learning curve youtube yeah. videos on how yeah, to yeah. remove uh, sounds, uh, you know, mm-hmm. low sounds. Of, Isolate uh, and, yeah. I, I, know oh, how yeah. to, I know how to mix stuff for like a video, like video production. Oh, yeah. But sound design and production, like post production yeah. sound is like really, I, you I gotta had, be a wizard. I had to like yeah. make, create my own school yeah. and learn it and then apply it yeah. and then tweak it throughout the movie to where, yeah. and there were times, that's why audio, even though 99% of the audio is done in our film, uh, it, I still end up going back sometimes because as I was progressing through the movie, I was learning so much that by the time I got to the end of the movie, the audio was so much better that when yeah. we watch it again, he's like, why does the audio the sound last, so bad? The, the, last, the last half of the movie sounds great. The first half is still like <laughs> a little wonky. That's funny. So, yeah. Like I, I, I want to go back and grab my, the last, the, I call it my first movie. Uh, it wasn't whatever. I, I want to go back to, and grab the first movie I'm proud of. And like recolor the whole thing now that I know my way around Resolve, you know, yeah, like, like George like, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, I'll put out the special edition of it where <laughs> flesh is actually oh flesh. So I might put some, I might put some some porgs in there. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, while we, just, I volunteer to play the pork. <laughs> while we just have, we just have a couple minutes left. So sure. 
pitch the, the festival like when is it where do people go to find you and contact you and all that stuff it's in it's in orlando but it is in orlando yeah, yeah. the festival uh the sick and wrong i'm gonna say the sick and wrong film festival is going to be from november 2nd through november 4th in orlando and it's going to be at an art gallery at the corner of magnolia and pine downtown uh, the gallery is called the Rogers Keene Building. I think they're changing the name. I don't know. But anyway, it's a Magnolian Pine. I The best way to get information is to find Sick and Wrong on Facebook. I have a website, but it's punctuated, and I know that nobody wants to put punctuation. Nobody remembers. Like, if I say sick hyphen and hyphen wrong, nobody's going to remember that. So all you got to do is go to Facebook and search for Sick N Wrong. The letter N. The letter N. Sick and wrong. And you'll find our festival and all the links are there. The tickets are on sale right now. Um, You can get uh, individual movie passes or you can get – or individual movie tickets or you can get a full festival pass. We're also having a couple of big parties. So if you want to come get drunk on my dime, just grab yourself a festival pass or a VIP pass and you can do that. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I got, I'm so proud of this this program this year. We got three days of movies, um, three features, yeah. three, features. three features. We also, um, I, oh, oh God, listen, there is a secret midnight screening on Saturday the third, and I'm not gonna, I can't not tell anybody secret. what it is, but it's a secret. Oh, it <laughs> but is. But you a gotta secret. come. It is a secret. It's a secret. And do you guys know? A sh- I don't know. There's a short film called William. Anybody? And ring a bell? It doesn't I mean, matter. It's, it's, all right. a, it's someone's it's a, name, so it sounds familiar, it but I don't rap? know if it actually sounds familiar. <laughs> you know a guy named Gwilliam? I've never oh, met Oh, Gwilliam. Anybody. I thought you said William. William. No, no, no. Oh. Gwilliam with a oh, G. Okay, no. Yeah. Gwilliam. No, I don't. Listen, I don't. If any of the listeners know what Gwilliam is, you're going to want to come to this Saturday night secret screening. It's going to be amazing. Um, but I guarantee anybody who comes to the festival is going to see something that they just have never before seen in their lives. I just, where, I just have to see. And will not be able to unsee. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. If you want to be somebody like we're all going to die at the end, you know, all you're going to have is a collection of experiences. And this is one of them. Let me tell is you. Is it going to be like lost where everyone there realizes that they're actually dead? <laughs> yeah, you you guys have been at the Second Rock Film Festival all along. <laughs> all along. It's just called Donald Trump's presidency. Oh! <laughs> I gotta cut that off. So, but um, um, okay, awesome. Well, I hope I get to come. I hope I get to I come. Actually, to that. gotta come that that weekend. We have I have another thing. We I told which well, I told drop you. Drop me about. off then. But, um, I, I, I gotta see. What is it, Sergeant Saggy Bottom? <laughs> Lieutenant. <laughs> Lieutenant Jangles. Jangles. Lieutenant. Jangles. I have to see that. Yeah. I, one of the filmmakers uh, said he couldn't come because he was getting married that day. Oh. Like, psh, dude. I question his commitment to the craft. Seriously, I almost want to reject him for saying that. You know, your movie's out. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, if you want to catch up with us, we are Film Reverie. Podcast. podcast at gmail.com it's been a long time since i've said yeah. that yeah. and uh filmreverie.com uh, filmreverie.com the website is sort of under reconstruction it's, so yeah, it's, it's, it's up... getting there uh if you, you want to one of those up... 1996 under construction gifts? No. 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 no 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 i specifically didn't do that i it's <laughs> like so 80s 90s yeah 90s 80s, <laughs> yeah, 90s. Yeah. 80s there wasn't any <laughs> the internet was pretty rough in the 80s yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we have before 56k bod modems. So, well, we had the we little had like phone the, thing that you put on the receiver. Right. Matthew Broderick calling yeah, Matt, up the yeah, war games. Norad, yeah. Right? Yeah, Norad. Norad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It was good talking to you. Uh I'm glad yeah. so glad I got to see your movie the other day too. I was I was oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny. I didn't want to mention it, but that was probably the tamest that I've made. So like when you say, "Hey, the people vomiting and shitting isn't all that normal." I'm yeah. like, "Oh, crap. That's right." <laughs> Well, that's you just get so desensitized by your own stuff. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, but I thought it was good. I want to see your other stuff. If you have links and stuff, you feel free to send them my way. I we'll, would like we'll, to we'll swap. Yeah. We'll swap. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll throw this one's out there. Uh, Demonskull.org. Anybody interested? There's a link to the, the my movies. There's also a link to the festival. From there. Film Reverie Podcast is a production of Super Mega Ultra Entertainment and is produced by Michael Beckemeyer and Bradley Kingston. If you're enjoying this podcast, please be sure to leave us a five-star review in iTunes and visit FilmReverie.com to listen to past episodes and be sure to click like or subscribe wherever you find us. That's it for this time. We'll see you again next week with another episode of Film Reverie.